Hey everyone, it's Joe Carroll. I'm here to answer a couple questions for you on FAC Friday. Not fact, it's FAC. I'm working on my debut EP, even though I've been a musician all my life, and have thought about pushing it. But I keep hitting a wall with the idea of it being pointless, owing to the fact that I'm at least 20 years past 21. Do you think it's a waste of effort past a certain age? Absolutely not. I believe most of us that are in this field we're artists at our core. I mean, the, the, for me, mixing and producing and musicianship isn't a career. It's not a hobby. It, it, it's like literally who I am at my very core. As deep as you can go right in the middle of me, that's what I am. So if I'm not working on music, uh, whether it's my own or whether I'm mixing something for somebody, I'm downtown tracking something, whatever the case may be, I'm not at my best. In fact, I can get quite miserable and, and probably uh, not really fun to be around if, I, if I'm away from this stuff too long. It, it's what fulfills me. And I think many of our guys that are watching this right now know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, when they are at their, let, let's say this isn't a full-time thing, but when they are at their full-time job, this is what they're thinking about. You know, getting, getting home and launching Pro Tools or Logic or whatever or their, their Les Paul, you know, they can't wait to get back home to their Les Paul, <laughs> the new Les Paul. So I think you have to do that stuff to fulfill that artistic thing that is down inside us burning, that we're never, never going to be happy with ourselves if we don't do it. And the fact whether, whether or not two people hear it or two million people hear it, honestly, other than the, than the income side of it, is irrelevant. I mean, it's, it's just completing who we are uh, as an artist, and I think it ha we have to document that stuff. Uh, never stop, never stop making music, never. Mixing instrument solos like a sax or a trumpet, do you apply the same techniques as you would a lead vocal? Yeah, actually, it, it can be very similar. A lot of times, it, it depends on how percussive the fill instrument is. Sometimes trumpets can be really, really uh, percussive, you know, in a way that a vocal isn't or that a saxophone necessarily isn't capable of. So they can punch harder. But that said, a lot of times, uh, uh, you know, on a, let's say a lead vocal, we do a buttery kind of thing, like an optical LA-2A or a very mu compressor. A saxophone really loves that thing. An LA-3A and LA-2A, just kind of gently digging in just a little bit, um, is, is a great sound for, for, a, for a brass instrument on a, on a lead. And, and then, of course, reverb and delay. You know, it, it's just, I think the standards have kind of been set for what people expect when in the genres of music where those instruments are still filling, for the most part, we have standards that people still want to hear. And there's nothing like a Lexicon 480 reverb with a little bit of a uh, very audible delay, like a like a digital delay instead of a tape delay, uh, where some of the high frequency is, is is still there. It's almost like that's what our ears expect to hear, and and, and we still we still like it, it, whether it was popular thirty years ago or whether it wasn't. So yeah, very very similar to a vocal. What would be your desert island vocal chain? Oh wow, I'm a gearhead, so that that's good. <laughs> that's going to be tough because if it's a desert island, I'm I probably gonna I'm gonna want to take a cargo ship full of gear because uh, i'm gonna want to be surrounded by it on that deserted island um all right so if i have to narrow it down if i've never heard the singer or have a, a bunch of singers to work with the the vocal mic for me that is always going to work is a u67 because it's kind of a, a little bit mid forward which kind of is where the vocal needs to live in a track uh, but it's not too hyped on the high end, so we're not going to get exaggerated sibilance, things like that. Uh, it's not hyped on the bottom end, so we're not going to get, you know, if it's a, if it's a deep male voice, uh, we're not going to get too much of that. Um, U67 on the front end. I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into a Neve, a vintage Neve 1073 style, transformer-based pre, uh, because I can, on a grungy song, I can get enough harmonic grit out of that transformer to be huge and awesome. Uh, but I can also, you know, click the gain down and get something that's that's really clean uh, or clean-ish, but still colorful. All right, so I'm going into a compressor. Even though I typically go with LA-2A style optical compressors, if, if, if it's a desert island and I don't know what topic, I mean, you know, genre I'm using, 1176, because I can do fast release, slow attack, you know, just kind of tickle it kind of thing. But I can also get really aggressive if I want to in a way that an LA-2A won't do. So 1176. Okay, so I got a 67, uh, Neve, 
1176, if I'm going to EQ that vocal, Cliff Mogg's Air Band. There's nothing like that Air Band, but then again, the Avalon 2055. Let's, first instinct, I went with Cliff. All right, so let's do the Mogg Air Band for the EQ. And effects? Let's do effects too, why not? A Lexicon 480. It's just that A plate, man, that A plate, right? Just such a great thing on vocals. And for my delay, can I use a plug-in? No, it's gotta be hardware. How about uh, an Echoplex? Why not? An Echoplex tape tape echo. <laughs> yeah, that would be that'd be, that would be a pretty killer chain. That'd be a pretty killer chain. What are the most important characteristics you look for in an assistant? That's a good one. That's a good one because it's so easy. Um, so easy for any of us to do. Work ethic. I, I honestly, in the early days, the, the Pro Tools skills, uh, the knowledge of any given console, uh, patch bay, all that kind of stuff is I wouldn't even say it's secondary. It's like fourth a dairy. <laughs> it's so far behind work ethic for me that it, it's it's silly. Um, every assistant I've ever hired, it, it was either because they uh, interned for me and I could see their work ethic, or I was looking for recommendations from other guys in the field because um, I didn't have anyone in my camp, you know, that was ready yet. Uh, and so I'd reach out to friends that I trusted, and it was always based on easy things. They're the first ones there. Um, they're always on time. Last ones to leave. Uh, they, they just they, they want to be there all the time. If 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 the doors are open and something is going on, they they're so excited about this career path and so excited about this craft that they want to be in the building. Anything, anything they can do, and they they're never they never feel the ones that I've hired don't seem to ever feel they're um, uh, beyond anything, too good for any task. So if literally the task is going to get coffee or emptying trash, or running to get the pizzas. Um, that's important. I mean, th that's not unimportant. And that's how you, nailing those small tasks is how you end up in this chair, you, you know, doing uh, to where you're the one sending other people out for runs. Uh, I, I just can't stress, um, we want to like them. We want a positive, happy personality, not overly chatty, but, but um, just happy, you know, uh, uh, with a great work ethic. And you're, if you get in the right rooms with the right people and they see that characteristic, the rest of it takes care of itself. It really does. It's, that's what they're looking for. Everything else can be learned. You, you, you know, what somebody's work ethic and, and passion for this field can't be changed. But work, work ethic, you know, is, um, is everything. Guys, it's been fun hanging out, but, but I've got chocolate to eat, so I'm going to get on out of here. <laughs> Happy Fact Friday. Happy mixing.